1935, Chicago. Out of the dust of dance marathons and walkathons, film publicist Leo Seltzer has fashioned a new competition, a 3,000-mile race on roller skates. The Transcontinental Roller Derby, the race that turned into something more. 1947, Roller Derby debuts on the American Broadcasting Channel. 1949, New York, the National Roller Derby League's week-long playoffs in Madison Square Garden sell out. 1961, Roller Derby has a new rival, Roller Games. But watch out, these fights are fake. 1968, Roller Games dies while Roller Derby thrives. September 15th, 1972, Chicago. 50,000 fans attended the Midwest Pioneers game at Comiskey Park, setting the new all-time Roller Derby attendance record. 19. 73. Seltzer can no longer afford it. The National Roller Derby is officially dead. 1989. Roller games are back on television once again, this time with an alligator pit. But the revival is short-lived and the games are off the air after one season. 1999. Roller Jam airs on TNN, making one final attempt to revive professional roller derby. However, it too fails. 2006. Roller Girls airs on A&E and ignites a new movement. And it looks a little something like this. It's very misleading because people do want to refer back to like the old derby. The bank track with girls, you know, using their elbows and getting into fights continuously and knocking people over the tops of the bank tracks. But it's it's not like that at all. It's actually unbelievable how much it's not like that now. Is it like wrestling? It's like the farthest comparison from roller derby because first of all, roller derby is not fake. Not a single bit of it is fake. I mean, we've all got the bruises to show you that it's not fake. I broke my humeral head. Yeah, I've had two concussions in the cracked tailbone. There are rules and penalties. No elbows, no pushing, no tripping, no biting, no spitting, no fighting. What you are allowed to do is hit the skater and you can use your upper arm and your shoulder and your hips. There are some teams and some leagues that do a lot of play fighting. That's one thing that our league has prided itself on is that we will not do that. You know, if you do that then it kind of you know, it kind of takes away from the sport itself because it looks like, you know, oh, there's another fight. Now the showmanship, you know, that's where each girl's individual persona comes in. Um, I picked my name just because I am what I am and that doesn't require any further explanation. I just show up and it's there. Um, but a lot of the other girls, you know, dress a certain way and, and you know, to, to put out their persona. Um, and so it's a lot of fun and it gets really gets the crowd involved. Part of my character comes um, from, my family is from the islands, uh, they are from Jamaica, uh, they're voodoo down there and different kind of religious things and I just kind of took it up and embodied it and you know I don't practice voodoo or anything, I just, <laughs> just kind of do the show. We were trying to talk about like our outros to a nervous mom and I was like well what, what if I threw a baby out and everybody laughed really hard. And I was like, that's what I'm going to do, because I honestly like, I feel like I'm going to puke every time I skate out, so I need to be not as interesting. Like, I need something like the attention to birds somewhere else. Puerto Rican poison is aggressive, she'll kick your ass, everybody's afraid of her, and everybody thinks that I fight outside derby and I'm like this, like, gangster or whatever, I don't know what they think I am. And then in reality, I'm just a sweet lady. Luckily for me, my parents are extremely supportive are probably the most supportive people. Like, I'm making shirts for them for the Jacksonville bout that say um, uh, Mama Gina and Daddy Gina, and they're actually gonna wear it for me. Um, so my parents think it's hilarious. I know that like a lot of the times when the jammer would become lead jammer and it was our jammer, then she would come around the corners and she would do the whole like, hey, look at me, I'm lead jammer, and like wave her arms in the air, like pull the skirt up and all that kind of stuff. And it really got the crowd into it. The things that I do help me out because they make me feel better about myself and make me kind of have a better game. People misconstrue showmanship for the sport being fake. Yeah, I get really pissed off when people say that it's not an athletic sport. The skirts and the fishnets and all the, you know, primpy glamour trying to look like pinup girls, that's all like well and fun, but that's always an after the fact. That's, you know, that's kind of like our little payoff, like, hey, look at us, we've been, you know, busting ourselves to, you know, make it this far and play as hard as we're playing. So after all that, yeah, we can put on some lipstick and be like, I'm badass and I got some red lipstick on. They go out there to win, to hit each other. And it's a very physical sport. Anybody who says it's not a sport should either 
attend a bout if they haven't. And if they have attended a bout and they still don't think it's a sport, then they should come to a practice and see what's involved. Because I'm, I'm pretty tough on my girls. And they are athletes, in my opinion. We do drills that relate to the game. Um, we do. We have blocking drills. We have speed and endurance training. And they taught us how to hit. And that was just beautiful. You have to think about the physics of it. You can't lift your arm like this when you're going to hit somebody. There can't be any, any movement of the elbow. So the sponges make them lock their arms into their body when they go to hit people. And if they drop those sponges, then they get push-ups. And that's pretty much the way it is. Eventually, they'll have really strong arms and really clean hits. That's the most important thing, is learning how to hit and throw somebody off of their skates. Strategy-wise, you have to think, OK, well, I need to get through this pack as quick as I can, so how am I going to do this? And you work it through your head of which is the quickest path to get through it. It's really complex in offense and defense at the same time, and it's really fast, and it becomes an addiction. And I think that that's probably how lots of amateur athletes feel, because um, why else would they be doing it? They asked us all once why we joined roller derby, and it was really surprising because probably like 16 or 17 out of the 20 some odd girls that were there said that they joined it because they wanted to find like a sisterly like because they didn't have any other girls that were their friends. The girls have been probably the most supportive people I've ever met. They're all very just interesting people, every single one of them. You know, you have people that have PhDs, you know, we have people like me that are professionals or teachers or members of the community that you would never know actually do roller derby. Somehow we all, like all these weird misfit crazy girls came together and you know started skating together and now we're all like best friends with each other and I'm closer now with girls than I've ever been in my life. I like being able to go out and hit people twice a week and I just, it makes me happy. <laughs> I love um, being aggressive without having to uh, apologize for it. And I like being myself. It's so awesome, it's so empowering, and people worship you, it's really cool. <laughs> like, I've signed autographs, and I'm not even famous. <laughs> like, it's so awesome. This sport is the greatest. It is the greatest sport ever.